I'd like to invite you, beg you really, to dive into my memories. For me, they tell the story of my descent into hell. This is case number 001 at the Special Jurisdiction for Peace. It's about the kidnappings carried out by the FARC. French Colombian Ingrid Betancourt testifies before judges in Bogota via Skype from Paris. She spends two hours describing the six agonizing years she was held hostage in the jungle. I accuse the FARC of psychologically torturing me and my family. The judges here put the victims' voices front and center. We've listened to your account in order to incorporate it into this process with you as an expert voice and witness, not just a passive victim. Julieta Lemaitre chairs the Chamber for Recognizing Truth and Responsibility, the first stage in the Special Jurisdiction for Peace, or JEP. This new transitional justice system focuses on reparations for victims. The repercussions, what happens after being freed, the impacts on families, that isn't the kind of thing that the main judicial system normally documents. But we're seeking restorative justice and thinking about how we can accomplish that and how we can satisfy victims. We need to understand the damage caused. The JEP emerged from an agreement signed in 2016 with the FARC guerrillas. Its mission? to judge those responsible for war crimes and crimes against humanity. They have 10 years to do it. In early 2018, the JEP's 700 civil servants began working at brand new offices in northern Bogota. Every day, they receive court documents from the regular justice system. At the courts, we deal with members of the FARC, members of the police and the army, and third parties. Inside one of these yellow folders is the case of a general sentence for assassinating a presidential candidate in 1989, in collusion with Pablo Escobar. We receive cases related to the armed conflict from courtrooms and tribunals all over the country. More than 12,000 people are expected to go through the transitional justice system. Those who admit to all their crimes will serve five to eight years in designated spaces without necessarily going to prison. Those who refuse to own up could face up to 20 years incarcerated. Investigators are tasked with reconstructing the details of half a century of conflict. The Peace Tribunal, the highest chamber of the JEP, dictates the sentencing. In case number 001, titled Illegal Detentions, the court began by listening to the victims. In the coming months, it will shift its focus to former guerrilla leaders. Many of those kidnapped never made it back from captivity. He wasn't just a good-looking guy. He was a man with many great qualities and sensibilities. Francisco Giraldo was shot by the FARC in 2007, along with 10 other delegates from the Regional Assembly of the Valle. The government officials have been held hostage for five years. For their families, the grief feels endless. Padre nuestro, que estás en el cielo. On this day, relatives came together in a park in Bogotá. Eleven palm trees were planted, each dedicated to a murdered delegate. On Francisco's plaque, there's a phrase he said in a video while in captivity. He talked about forgiving his jailers. Forgiveness is personal, but it's not legal. So I do hope that the JEP Act and that those who committed crimes against humanity serve their sentences. Some victims worry the JEP will be too soft on perpetrators, but to build lasting peace, the transitional justice system will have to include some compromises. One of the FARC's sticking points in the peace agreement was that state actors also answer for their crimes alongside them a first in the world. For the state to be judged equally alongside guerrilla fighters in the same tribunal, that's never happened. 
So, like everything that's new, it's generated, well, it's not escaped controversy. The current Colombian president, Ivan Duque, and his party are against the peace agreement. They've tried in vain to block JEP cases involving government agencies. The army left and took my friends with them. Then my friends showed up dead in Carmen de Viboral, wearing guerrilla uniforms. Over the past three decades, the government killed thousands of innocent civilians and presented them as guerrilla fighters killed in combat. Only a few army soldiers were sentenced for murdering Pastor Jaramillo's companions. They never investigated the intellectual authors who sent them to do what they did or under whose orders they were acting. At least 8 million people were victims of the armed conflict in Colombia. Many are now holding out hope that the JEP will finally bring them justice in a country where impunity has long been the norm.